Hi there. So if you clicked on this video, then you're probably we're thinking about getting an action camera for vlogging. And I'm going to give you a pretty good reason why you would get an action camera for vlogging. Here is one of them right now. Rain. Rain is a good reason to get an action camera for vlogging. Because the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 isn't waterproof. And you may live in a country like Canada or maybe England. And even Australia gets some cyclones that the rest of the world doesn't hear about or appreciate that I actually did some research on. And of course there's some flooding. I'm going to show you a little bit of flooding right there that we can't even walk through. It is pretty deep. When the weather isn't good, you're going to want something that is waterproof. And you also are going to need a little bit of lighting and you're also going to need a gimbal. Now, why would you need a gimbal? Well, it's not exactly sunny out, and electronic image stabilization doesn't work the best in this type of environment. So, if you're wondering which gimbal to get, you might want to stay tuned because you're watching Blue Collar Guy. Okay, so vlogging in the rain. Do you really want to be vlogging in the rain? Ultimately, no. You don't really want to be vlogging in the rain. Not ideal in the situation. However, if you must, you're definitely going to want to have something that is water resistant and not something that is going to, I don't know, self-destruct, I guess. If I had the Osmo Pocket 3 out in this weather, it'd be dead already. So we're not going to vlog out in the rain for very long because A, I don't have to, and two, we need to go back to the studio so I can show you the difference between which action camera you should get and which gimbal you should get for your action camera and some possible lighting solutions because I'm using one right now. Okay, so we're back in the studio and we're talking about using action cameras for vlogging cameras. And I've often said that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is a sensational camera. It, it works very, very well. But when the weather's not good, you're going to need something different. If you want to film uh, rough terrain or uh, questionable, uh, you, know, you don't know what the weather is going to be. You know, it could be either lightning, it could be hurricanes, it could be all kinds of bad weather, flooding, um, you name it. I just gave you a quick taste of what I was dealing with in Montreal and we had some flooding earlier. So when you're in that situation, you don't want to drop a thousand dollar Osmo Pocket 3 into a puddle and be done with it. Had I filmed with the Pocket 3 out in that weather, the rain would have gotten into the mechanisms and it would have destroyed the camera without a doubt. But action cameras like the Osmo Action 3, which is this little guy right here, or you can have the Action 4, which I actually recommend more for vlogging and I will explain more in later in the video and then some people are diehard GoPro fans and I was a GoPro fan too at one time and I have a GoPro Max I still use it it's still a relevant camera it's still useful I made a video to show just that it's still useful and relevant still expensive too why would you use the Osmo Action 4 instead of uh, let's say a GoPro 12 or um, 
maybe in a castle or another no-name uh, action camera. Why would you pick this particular one over those cameras for vlogging? Okay, so the first reason why I would pick this particular camera over the other ones for vlogging is it does 10-bit color. It does 422. You can put your own LUTs on it. So that would be reason number one. Reason number two would be it can pair wirelessly with a microphone without compromising its waterproof ability. And that is something that you can't do with a GoPro. With a GoPro, you have to put a media mod on the camera and then you have to you know, use a microphone connected to that or maybe plug in your wireless setup after that, all of which is not waterproof. So that just isn't going to work. A simple setup for this camera would be to grab a basic tripod such as this, okay, link it up with, you know, there you go, you've got it with your with your quick connect, okay, your, your, you can even put on, let's say, a, a light like this one. So now you have a light, okay? And now you're vlogging, wireless microphone, you're good to go, and that is a basic and very portable and quick setup for your DJI Osmo Action 4. And I'd also like to remind my viewers that the Osmo Action 5 is soon to come out as well. And I'm curious to see what the features are on that camera. So this camera, other than the Action 3, so this is one of the reasons why I would pick the Action 4 over the Action 3, is because of the connectivity with the wireless microphone. This can't do that. So in bad weather, you could not use this with an external microphone. You would have to use the microphones that are in the camera itself, and they're probably not going to sound as good. Or if you have to move around, or maybe get a more of a distant shot, you're going to compromise your audio clarity and the ability to get whatever you're trying to say to your audience. The other reason is, is the DJI Mic 2, which you can pair with your Osmo Action 4, also has 32-bit float recording. And if the audio gets compromised or you lose connection or anything, you can record internally. And I even showed on a previous video how to not only do a firmware update using just your phone, but you can also transfer the 32-bit float recording directly to CapCut if you're editing on your phone. So, you know, these are uh, very uh, critical things if you're vlogging. You want to have ease of use when it comes to that. Now, reason number three why you would want to have the Osmo Action 4 is that if I hit the link button, I can start and stop the recording from here instead of having to push the button there. Now you can buy an external remote control that will not only control the Osmo Action 4 and the 3, but it can control, I believe, up to 16 or 19 cameras at the same time. So if you have a multiple camera shot, you can actually hit the record button and it even tells you on the little tiny remote how many cameras you have linked. It does not do GPS because it was originally made for the DJI Action 2. And I will put a link in the description so that if you want to get a hold of that remote control you can. I think it might even be on sale now. It doesn't have GPS though, so it's not the Osmo Action 4 remote with the GPS. It is a cheaper remote that's meant for the DJI Action 2, and I figured out that it also works the 4 and the 3. So you could actually have 
different generations of cameras all running on the same remote. So if I was to buy an Action 2, let's say I got one on sale or I got one on eBay, I could hit record and it'll do 3, 2, and 4. No problem. Comes with a little tripod, but the tripod's kind of cheesy. I don't particularly like the tripod that it came with, but the remote works. And it is an official DJI remote. It is not a third-party remote. When I was outside, I was using a gimbal. Now I have three action camera gimbals. I use all of them for different reasons. I was a little bit hesitant in getting the Hohem iSteady Pro 4 gimbal because I've had Hohem gimbals before and there was reliability issues. As a matter of fact, some people have complained about some reliability issues with this particular gimbal. I have not experienced any reliability issues. I just took it outside and it works. So this is the Hohem iSteady 4 gimbal. I'm going to go to the downward shot so we can take a better look at everything. So let me just punch up that uh, downward shot here. Got myself in the corner. I'm going to just back off the zoom here for a little bit. Okay. So got a little bit of a little bit of a mess on this side. Let's just move this stuff here out of the way. Got some cords, some cables. Whoops, knocked over the GoPro. It's a good thing. See, that's the other thing about action cameras, they're they're fairly durable. So this would be a basic setup for your DJI Action 4. And this would be a gimbal setup. As you can see, it is quite a bit larger and you can screw a tripod on it as well. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. I'll put that over there. So this particular gimbal also has a remote control. It came in this little tiny case and you pair it by hitting this seven times it puts it in pairing mode and then you can control your gimbal with this and I'll do some pairing on it just to show you that it works it has a little on off switch here and I guess you got to remember to turn it off but this gimbal has a one feature that is better than the other gimbals. And I'm just gonna go back to me really fast. So the feature is, is that this gimbal is the only one that I have that is water resistant. And that is why I got it, because Canada has poor weather. Now why the other gimbals weather resistant, I don't know. I do like the Inkey Falcon Plus gimbal. It it's a very high quality feeling gimbal. It's also smaller than this gimbal. And it even has a three click selfie mode, which means it'll spin the camera around just like the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, but it doesn't do bad weather. And it also involves a little bit of balancing, but that is a plus and a minus. And I'm gonna get into that too. So on this one here, you don't have to um, balance it you just put your action camera inside of it and I'm going to show you how that works so here is the action 4 and I'm just going to undo the clip this is like in a little type of an elastic style clip and then you put in your action camera like so and then you oh, I think I might have had it upside down what am I doing Okay, so let me just see if I've got this right. I believe I do. Okay, so this little guy here. Now, if you've noticed, I've got the case on. A lot of people put it with the case off. However, it fits better with the case on than with the case off because there's no gap. This tends to cover the gap. And... Uh, 
I do like that because I like to tend to leave it in a case if I can. And with the other gimbals that I have, you can't do that. You have to take the camera out of the case. Okay. So I'm going to just put it in here. And it's a bit of a snug fit. So you're going to find that it's, it is tight when you're getting this positioned in there. But it does fit. And it fits rather well. See, there's no gaps. There's no gaps when you put it in with the case. So if you wanted a little tip, there's a good tip. Now I'm going to go back to me. So now I'm going to power on the gimbal. And we'll go like this. And the gimbal powers on. It's nice and quiet. Now a lot of people have complained that it doesn't go left or right. If you put your thumb in the middle, I'm not having that issue. However, I do know that Hohem has had some quality control issues with some of their products. This one here appears to be very well made. So I can't fault them on this. Now we're going to pair it with the remote control. So I've got to I leave this off and then I'm going to click this little record looking button seven times. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to turn on the remote. And it should pair, it should have paired instantly. So let's try and control it. And it's working. See, look, uh, I'm moving it and I'm not, I'm not touching it. See, I'm not touching it. I can go up and down. I believe I can even center it again. Let me just see if I can center it again here. Okay. Maybe I just click this one twice, or is it this one? There we go. So if I turn it and then I want to recenter it, I can do that remotely. And then it'll center. Okay. So I'll go all the way down. Click this twice, and it'll center again. Okay, no problem. And it has a, I think it's got a memory feature where you can remember certain settings. So, there you go. So, the little tiny remote, and if anything, it's a little too small. Because look how small that thing is. It's tiny. And uh, it works good with that. Now, the whole hem I study for also has uh, the ability to put an accessory on the side so it I've put a light and I did a review on this light so this particular light has a soft box type of um, and it also has uh, little barn doors and all types of other features for it too so it's a very very soft light you can take this off and it's even brighter but it does have a little softbox, so if you're filming and you want to have the same effect as what I'm using in the studio, then this would be a good accessory for that as well. And if you're doing the portable setup, then I would recommend the other light. I'll put a link in the description for both these lights. I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid me to make this video. I don't have any paid Amazon affiliate link. So if you buy any of these things, I don't get anything for it. The only thing that I would make any revenue on is by watching this video. If you click like and share this video with your friends, I will get views from that and I'll get revenue from that. But that is it. So getting back to this gimbal. So I'm going to turn off this light. I've already demonstrated it in pairing mode. And um, it has lots, you know, it's, it's a fairly decent gimbal. I'm not going to say that it's, it's bad. And because I bought it with my own money, I can say that. It feels okay. It doesn't feel as premium as the Inkey Falcon Plus. If you live in a place with good weather and you just want something for nighttime shooting, and that is the reason why you would put a gimbal on an action camera is for extra stability and for nighttime shooting because the image stabilization that is in these action cameras 
is it's governed by how much light they receive in there. So the darker the image is, image stabilization just goes out. But gimbals don't require that. So if you wanted the full explanation why you would have a gimbal with an action camera, well, that's it. You don't need to have EIS working. They will work with or without it. And when you put them both together, you can get very, very ultra smooth footage. And I've done other videos on double axis stabilization and things like that. As a matter of fact, they got quite a few views. So if you want to see double axis stabilization, go check out that video too. And uh, yeah, now, like I said, if I click the trigger three times, it doesn't do anything. It won't come all the way around and do selfie mode. The Inky Falcon Plus does and the Feutech Vimble 2A does. It also does not have a telescopic neck on it. That is the advantage of the Feutech Vimble 2A. The Inky Falcon Plus though doesn't have time-lapse recording. So this one has a pretty decent app in which you can put two points and then you can have the camera go from point A to point B in a certain amount of time and you can do a time-lapse shot. With a weather sealed gimbal and you wanted to film something outside, let's say you were camping or something like that, this would be a good gimbal to take camping because you don't know what you're going to run into weather-wise. If it gets a little bit water splashed on it, it's still going to be okay. However, do not take it underneath the water. Do not subject it to underneath a waterfall, for instance. It's not going to like that much water. Rain, fine. The occasional splash, probably okay. But waterfalls, um, oops, sorry, waterfalls and, you know, large things of water, you know, you know, uh, snow would be probably okay, but maybe even in a huge blizzard where the snow just packs it, I don't know. I'm going to take it out into a blizzard and see what happens to it. The price wasn't bad. It is cheaper than the Inky Falcon Plus. And it did come with a case, and the Inky Falcon Plus didn't, and I was kind of disappointed in that. Uh, the ease of use, as far as just how I put it in there, with no balancing required. Now, the one thing about the Inky Falcon Plus is that after you balance it, you don't have to do it again, because I just put a, a magnetic clip for, you know, to just clip on the uh, action camera, and because I'm using the same kind of camera, you don't have to keep rebalancing it. You cannot put a GoPro Max in here. You can put a GoPro 12. Now, here's one advantage of having the GoPro over the DJI Osmo Action cameras, is that all of the gimbals that I just talked about can pair with those cameras. So if I hit the record button on here, I can record to those cameras, but I can't do it with the Osmo Action 4. So unfortunately, there is no agreement between these companies and DJI as far as controlling their cameras, recording and zooming and that sort of thing. You can't control any of the features on the camera with that. And that's the other reason why I got the other remote control. But it hasn't been that big of a, it's not a deal breaker for me because as I said, I can turn the camera on and off with the microphone or I can use a remote control for recording and stopping and changing some of the settings. That's the other thing you can do with the other remote. You can change it from video mode to photo mode, slow motion, that sort of thing. You know, your presets. I know that it took me a while to make this video, but I wanted to make sure that I did it under the right circumstances. In other words, I, I wanted some rain. And I'm just going to power it off now. And uh, it does have one other feature, by the way. It does have a port here in the back. Let me just go to the downward shot really fast here. So I'm going to go to the downward shot. There's a port right here. 
I don't know if you can see it. Let me get some more light. I've got all these lights there. There, yeah, there it is right there. See, there's a port right here. And you can actually power your action camera and connect it directly to here to give it power. Keep in mind, if you do that, you're going to lose your water resistance because the minute you open this door, water can get in there and that's it. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that it helped you make your decision on not only which gimbal to get, but which action camera to get for your gimbal. So keep in mind, study what your action cameras can do as far as options. Now, the other thing too is with a 360 camera, you don't need to really worry about the angle of your shot. You can control that after you're done doing your shooting. In other words, you can do that all in post. However, it takes a long time. It is not something you can do quickly. Now, I understand that the uh, Insta360 X4 has uh, 8K, and you can also uh, shoot from many angles at the same time. However, the rendering when you render it and you're you're done your final shot you're not going to have 8k footage but it's not going to be as clear as an action camera so if you're wondering what the advantage of this over let's say an insta 360 x4 is you're going to get better image quality you're going to get better low light quality so if it's not perfect that way it's also going to cost you roughly about the same amount of money, but that's with the gimbal and some other accessories like the wireless microphone. Here's another kicker for you. The Insta360 X4 connects to the DJI Mic 2. So why not just buy the Action 4 because, you know, you might as well just buy the DJI compatible equipment. It's in my opinion, better that way. I'm not a big fan of the Insta360 uh, cameras. You know, when they said that they came out with 8K cameras and I looked at how big the files were going to be to have to deal with with 8K, uh, I, I don't know. If DJI comes out with 8K cameras, I'm probably going to be maybe recording in 8K, but I will downscale to 4K just because it just makes more sense. And when you upload to YouTube, they're going to compress it with their compression hardware or software anyway, sorry, not hardware, software. They're going to compress it with their software. And they have very, very, I guess, advanced compression software, probably some of the most advanced in, in the world. So um, uh, I believe, I was looking at how their software actually uploads and things that don't move, it actually doesn't have to re, um, it doesn't re put new information on anything that doesn't move, only the things that move. And that's how they save on their file size and that's how they can get a file size from several gigabytes down to megabytes. Anyways, take care, be safe at work, and I will see you at the next video. Bye.